Hello, Happy New Year, and welcome to this special edition of In Case You Missed It. My name is Andrew Duthie, and I'm a developer advocate here at OutSystems. And in this episode, we're going to look back at the highlights of 2021 in OutSystems. Let's jump right in. We kicked off 2021 with the Build for the Future Hackathon, featuring 15 teams of developers from OutSystems partners, all working to craft solutions to help three nonprofit organizations better serve their communities. The Hackathon winners, Phoenix DX champions, Evera Social Reload, and Drakkar Pay It Back were announced in late February. See the blog post in the description for more details. February also saw the launch of season two of the Decoded podcast, featuring conversations on platform building, from guests from many well-known companies like Slack, AWS, Twilio, and more. The first three months of the year also saw new features, including version 7 of the mobile app build service, or MABS, the ability to directly edit data in Service Studio in non-production environments, and many updates to Experience Builder, Workflow Builder, and the Case Management Framework. April saw the announcement of the Cloud Innovation Summit in collaboration with Amazon Web Services. The event took place in May, and the sessions are available to watch on demand at the link in the description. In April, we also released Parallel Workflows in Workflow Builder and added an easy way to track recent findings in Architecture Dashboard through time-based results filters. May was a major month for new product updates, including technical previews for both SEO-friendly URLs for reactive web apps and built-in emails for mobile and reactive web apps, as well as the introduction of flexible upgrades and multilingual support in case management framework. See the links in the description for more information. In May, we also announced the return by popular demand of the OutSystems Developer Conference, a two-day virtual event just for OutSystems developers. You spoke, and we listened. More on the results later in this episode. In June, we added new flows to Experience Builder to aid in creating UI for recovering logging credentials. One less thing for you to have to build by hand. We also added OutSystems Maps, a new, more powerful component for adding mapping, markers, and directions to your OutSystems apps. In July, we launched a new dedicated site for OutSystems user groups to make it easier for developers to find groups near them and to have a consistent experience registering for and attending OSUG events. You can find the link in the description. On the product front, in addition to more improvements in architecture dashboard and a new version of the barcode scanner plugin, July also witnessed three big releases. First was the release of the data grid for reactive web apps. Next was the release of Integration Builder, providing a faster and easier way to integrate with enterprise systems of record and data sources. But by far, the favorite of most developers and possibly the most anticipated release of the year was the release of the Service Studio IDE on Mac OS, which included the first ever dark mode in Service Studio. You can download the Mac IDE and find more about the other releases in the links in the description. If you're a fan of In Case You Missed It, you might have noticed that we went dark in the second half of the year. Well, there was a reason for that, which is that your humble ICYMI team was focusing heavily on preparing for OSDC and making sure that the developer content was top notch. Hopefully it was a worthwhile trade-off, but we hope to do a better job of juggling this year. But just because we didn't recap things for August didn't mean nothing was happening. Oh no. In late July and throughout August, OutSystems published a four-part blog series on crushing technical debt, highlighting many of the features in OutSystems that help avoid, highlight, and solve technical debt. And in August, we also launched Season 3 of the Decoded podcast. In September and October, things really heated up in preparation for OSDC. Lots of reviewing of talks, dry runs with speakers, and loads of logistics to ensure a smooth online experience for speakers and attendees alike. But there was still time for some product updates, including the addition of server-side pagination for the reactive data grid component and the brand new health and fitness plugin for mobile to make it easy to integrate with the Apple HealthKit API and Google Fit API in your OutSystems apps. Ah, November. Time for pumpkin spice lattes, changing leaves, at least for those of us in the northern latitudes, and of course, the long-awaited arrival of the OutSystems Developer Conference. And what an OSDC it was. Two days, three time zones, each with unique content, 130 speakers delivering 112 unique sessions attended by 8,700 passionate OutSystems developers. And we'd like to thank you all for your passion and support and for helping us make OSDC a big success. 
Let's see though, were there any big announcements at OSDC that we should mention? Well, how about Project NEO, the future of the OutSystems platform? OSDC provided a sneak peek at Project NEO, which will update and streamline the developer experience and tools you use every day to build your OutSystems applications, as well as modernizing the platform architecture for the future. You can learn more about Project NEO at the link in the description, and you'll be able to get your hands on it later in 2022. December is typically a pretty quiet time of the year, with lots of folks taking time off for the holidays and to recharge for the new year. But there was still time for some new product releases, including the general availability of SEO-friendly URLs for reactive web apps, as well as built-in emails for mobile and reactive web. We also released a technical preview of external database integration in Integration Builder, and a set of accelerators in Service Studio to, well, accelerate building common customer use cases through a set of customizable building blocks complete with sample data. Check them out at the link in the description. 2021 was also a great year for The Forge, and I'm going to turn things over to my colleague Christiana for the details. Krish, over to you. Thanks, Andrew, for the journey. Let me continue this journey into Forge. And why don't we start with a few numbers, shall we? So in 2021, we had 1,000 new components and 42 new component creators. Hello, thank you for participating. Welcome to the community. Also, in the total amount of components that we have currently available, 638 components now have documentation, and this is more than we had in 2020. So keep it up. Also, more than a half of our total components have four or more stars, which is a really cool thing. And to finish this off, we had a total amount of 104,000 total downloads across all components in Forge. So thank you everyone for participating and for making these numbers happen. So let's continue with a few different highlights. Uh, let's say, why don't we talk about the assets creation team that started last year and together with the community, component creators and owners, in collaboration, they certified 35 components as trusted, which means that we have a few more components that the overall community can trust and use in their development work, which is pretty cool. Also, let's talk about a few new supported components, like for example, we have the BDD framework for reactive, we have the out systems maps component, which can help you have maps in your app. And of course, the out systems accelerators that came late in the year, but is a cool component because as a variety of code that can help you accelerate a few use cases. Like for example, if you need to log in with social media, you can use it. Also for components created by the community, a few highlights. So we have the HTML to PDF component that was created past year, which is a revamp of the well-known HTML to PDF converter. And we also have the PDF viewer binary that helps you view a PDF. For a few different things. So we had a new component called OutSystems Low Code Exercises, which helps you practice your skills with OutSystems, which is a cool thing to do when you're learning or trying to keep up with the new trends. And we also have the low code review component that helps you in the code review process of your development work. And to finish, the SQL advanced query samples for dummies, which can help newcomers to have a little bit more understanding of how advanced queries or the SQL nodes can help you in developing an app. So that's it for Forge in 2021. Once again, a word of appreciation to anyone that contributes to this community and keeps up the good work. Let's see what 2022 has reserved for us. See you in the next one. Take it away, Andrew. As you can see, there was a lot going on in 2021 and some really cool features released and events to attend. And we're not done. 2022 will bring even more cool stuff, including, of course, the public availability of Project NEO. There are sure to be a few surprises along the way as well, so be on the lookout. What was your favorite OutSystems moment of 2021? Did we miss something? Let us know in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you can be among the first to hear about the next episode. We'll see you then. Bye.